worship our Lord together. I invite you to quiet your distractions and silence your cell phones as David plays the praying for us. are wonderful. I know it full well. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there 
there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's stand and sing our first hymn number 126. Thou art worthy, we're going to sing it through twice.
Christ is able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. Let us, therefore, approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Go forth with this good news and know that your sins are forgiven.
Not short title. This is a, I want to stroll over heaven with you. Oh, stroll over heaven with you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Beautiful. God bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Here she is, our resident youth artist. Forward, she's getting taller and taller. Yes. She's catching yes. up to me. Pretty soon I'll be looking up to you. <laughs> Would you tell us about your, your art today? Um, well, she says was telling me that Nico Davis that he needed to be born again, and Nico Davis didn't understand that. Okay, so tell us tell us what all is on that. Um, well, basically, like in the woods, and Nico Davis is when she says Nico Davis like doesn't understand. Okay. So what are what are these? Stone. Okay. So I might be able to throw some theology on this, although I don't know that it was your intention. But in between, is this Jesus? Right. In between Jesus and Nicodemus is the fire, which we can liken to the Holy Spirit's fire, right? And it, it desires to burn within Nicodemus, but. There's these, these stones, the hardness of, of our hearts, right? The rock that prevents the, the, the fire from entering into Nicodemus. At least for now. Because what we find out about Nicodemus is, Nicodemus is part of burying Jesus in the tomb. Um, and we also have indications that after the resurrection, Nicodemus becomes a Christ follower. So keep that in mind when we hear the story today uh, about that that just drew for us uh, from John 3, 1, 17, that in time, these the hardened heart, right, the rock that's preventing the Holy Spirit from fully uh, burning within Nicodemus, um, that hardened, hardness of his heart gets softened and he becomes a follower of Christ. So today we're going to hear about the first time he goes and talks to Jesus. And just gets it right that he comes to Jesus by night. By night. Yep. Yes. Good job. Very good. Nice job. Thank you so much. Looking forward to your next one. All right. Well, at this time, we turn our hearts and our minds to the Lord in prayer. Um, I, there's a little bit of an update. Good news. Praise be to God. Um, that May is making some progress. Um, she still has nerve pain, um, but her appetite is back. Um, she's, she's able to do uh, all of the typical things that we do when we are getting better. Um, and so there are signs that she is making uh, progress, and for that, uh, we, we praise God. And we praise God also for her daughters and her son who take such close and careful care of her and the progress that she's making. Um, also, um, Bob, uh, Bob and Marianne are... Uh, Karen, you want to give us an update on your parents? You would know more than me. Um, it's day to day um, with everything. My father has now um, they decided to do hospice because he just wanted to be home. He was tired of going back and forth to the hospitals at this point. So he's um, with hospice and my mom, she's doing okay. She's in therapy and you know, but of course as you get older all the aches and pains are coming on so. Right. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Any others this morning? Yeah, Ron? I'd like to, uh, we need to pray for Lynn who's going in for a, a test this week. This week? Yeah. Lynn B. Yeah. And um, also, if I may mention, Timmy uh, will be going in the end of this month for stents in his legs to improve his circulation. Um, others this morning to be lifted in prayer. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Robert did well on his infusion. Praise God. Yes, but also with May, we do pray just to lessen the anger of pain. Yes. Yes. Not good, not good. Yeah. 
brothers this morning, are they? Well, my sister celebrated a birthday on March 1st. Which sister? Hopi. Hopi. <laughs> and my daughter celebrated her birthday on March 2nd. Yes, I saw Justine. that. Justine's birthday. Yeah. How old is Justine now? 36 years okay. old. <laughs> we have another birthday in the building yeah. that requires that we sing happy birthday to our... <laughs> Let's sing. Spirit, 
Make us confident that we are worthy of your love, not because of anything we have done, but simply because of what you have done for us. Help us then to trust that that is enough. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the Sabbath day, this opportunity to rest our souls and our bodies in your holy presence and be filled with the power of our faith. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing. Nourish our souls for the journey that lies ahead. Feed us, Lord, through your word and through the sacrament. And then send us forth into the world singing your praises and serving others in your name. We pray this day for all those throughout the world who are suffering the effects of hatred, prejudice, violence, terrorism, and war. We remember the struggle for equality and civil rights, the 58th, 58th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Lord, we lift up the people of Ukraine and Turkey and Syria this day, all those living amongst devastation. We pray for a change of heart in the oppressor, Russia. We pray for those who've been sent to help restore life in Turkey and Syria. Lord, we pray for all the world's leaders, both those here in the United States as well as across the globe, most particularly as this political season begins ramping up again. Lord, we pray that it would not be the divisive rhetoric that we have seen in the past. Lord, we remember all of those in positions of power and authority over others and ask that you would soften hearts and open minds to desire peace and cooperation. Lord, work within us to be examples of the world of your love, to extend that love and mercy toward our neighbors right here in our own towns and our own neighborhoods. Lord, help us to manifest your love and grace into the world. Lord, we pray for all of the sick this day, for all those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, confident in your ability to heal us. We pray that we would witness that healing so that your name would be praised throughout the world and eyes would be turned to the amazing power of God Almighty at work. We lift up by name this morning for May and to seek a release of her pain. We pray for Bob, now under hospice care, and for his beloved wife of so many years, Mary Ann, and for the family as they work through this time together. We pray for Lynn, who is going in for tests this week, and Lord, we ask that those tests would be accurate and they would lead to answers. We pray for, for Timmy as he prepares himself to go in later this month to receive some stents to help his circulation. We pray that that would be successful and uncomplicated. We pray for Denise, who is recovering from breast surgery. We lift up the man, the blind man, at the Bendix Diner who works despite his affliction. We ask a blessing upon him as he serves as an example to us of what life can be when we face our adversities with grace. Lord, we thank you, we praise you for the life and another year for Braden and hope for KJ and Arlene and the birthdays that they are celebrating. We thank you, we praise you for successful treatments for Robert. Oh, and for Justine's birthday as well. Lord, we thank you, we praise you for the progress that May is finding in her illness. We thank you, we praise you this day as well for this 
faith community here in this place for the love that we share and the work that you call us to do. Lord, I thank and I praise you for each one who is contributing in some way to the upcoming celebration of the ordination and whatever way they will take part in that day. Lord, we seek your blessing upon it. We pray all these things through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the one who taught us to pray. And so we say together with one voice this day, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, 
but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Claire. <coughs> One of the greatest questions that every believer I have ever met almost always has, I know it is true for myself, is about this process of our transformation. The scriptures clearly tell us that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Simple as that. The old life is gone, and a new life is here. It sounds simple enough, doesn't it? But even one of the great Pharisees, this man named Nicodemus, struggled to understand this new life in Christ. And even today, Christians still struggle to understand what this means to be born again. Nicodemus is a man who served on the Jewish ruling council known as the Sanhedrin. He is a Pharisee serving on the Sanhedrin. And so Nicodemus was certainly a well-trained and learned man who knew the Old Testament scriptures and lived out a life of faith. But God in Jesus Christ was busy carrying out a new thing in the world. This new covenant that would fulfill the old covenant. And it was a covenant of reconciliation with God through the forgiveness of all our sins. And in doing so, that then sends to us, to the heart of every believer, the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Now Nicodemus as a man of God, seems to be sensing something here, something that's at work in the world, in this new rabbi who has just arrived in Jerusalem, this man named Jesus. And it seems that the Spirit of God is prompting Nicodemus to go to Jesus in the cloak of night because Jesus because sorry, Nicodemus wants to know more. But as a Pharisee, as someone who represents the Jewish ruling council, the authority of the temple, it would be wrong. It would certainly be bad for appearance sake for this noted Pharisee, this member of the Sanhedrin council, to be seen going to Jesus for answers in the daylight. After all, along with all the other members of the Sanhedrin Council, they are the ones who are supposed to be experts when it comes to knowing the things of God. So Nicodemus arrives at night under the cloak of darkness. But in arriving, we can tell from what Nicodemus says that he also has some kind of a clue as to who Jesus is is, and he is intrigued by this man. In the first words Nicodemus speaks to Jesus upon his arrival, he says, we know that you are a teacher who has been sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing if God were not with him. 
Nicodemus' heart has been touched by God. And Nicodemus wants to know more. But his heart will have to be opened in order to understand. So immediately knowing, Nicodemus recognizes at least a little bit of who Jesus is and that he's come wanting to know more. Immediately, Jesus obliges with this teaching about being born again. Now, if you are like me, many of us, being born again evokes certain images, images usually associated with evangelical Christianity, images that perhaps, if you are like me, are not always the most positive in nature, images that sometimes speak of pride and self-righteousness, images perhaps of being judged by others and having your faith questioned as somehow suspect. This idea of being born again as one version, one denomination, one type and expression of Christianity began in the mid-1970s. According to, the, to Encyclopedia.com, this term being born again is associated with the public discourse in America when Jimmy Carter was running for president in 1976. This common evangelical phrase is used to describe one's decision, a conscious choice, whether or not to follow Jesus. And it brought about this concept of being born again Christians into common usage. Being born again is a term used primarily by evangelicals in order to distinguish themselves and their followers from all other types of Christians. But the result of this claim of being born again has essentially also created a man-made hierarchy of Christian believers between those who consider themselves to be born again from everybody else. But besides this man-made human hierarchy, there's also another issue when it comes to claims of being born again. You see, for born-again Christians, there's always a nagging fear of losing one's faith. <clears throat> because the reality is, if it was up to you to choose to believe, then it's also up to you to choose to keep it. And there is a deep concern about the possibility of losing your salvation and going to hell. A number of years ago, I was serving as commission pastor for Christian education at the church up in Oakland. And I was introduced to my stepmother's cousin, a man who called himself born again. He was a born again Christian, and he was utterly concerned with deep concern that I too had to be born again as he understood it to be in order for my salvation. I assured him that I was confident in Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice for my sin. And that because of Jesus Christ, I was absolutely confident that I was saved without question. But his response told me clearly and without question that he was deeply skeptical. But you see, my friends, we do not save ourselves. And no act on our part whatsoever can save us. Only Christ can do that. It is Christ who claims us. It is Christ who saves us. And it is Christ who then provides us the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. And then our lives become this reflection of Christ by the Spirit's work within us. Because Christ's promises are eternal. Promises 
they can be trusted. And I never have to worry about not being saved ever again. I never have to worry about somehow losing my salvation as I live out my life in this difficult struggle of this world. You see, there's nothing I have done to earn my salvation. Therefore, there is nothing I can ever do to lose it. And this, my friends, is the true freedom given to us freely in Jesus Christ that has happened by no effort of our own. How truly freeing this gift of our redeeming is, this gift to us of our salvation. Just as Nicodemus himself claims that he can do nothing in order to be reborn in this earthly life, so Jesus assures us that there is nothing we can do to be born again either. It is rather an act already accomplished for us by God. And in the work of the Holy Spirit, active and living among us and living within us, we then receive the new life as a gift from God. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit to create this new life, this rebirth. Now in the original translation, we get a different sense of what this means to be born again. The actual Greek word here is not to be born again. It is to be born from above. Born as a gift from the God who loves us. And in the Bible, God's spirit is that which comes to us as the holy wind, the ruach of God that gives life and whose power blows God's will in the world into being. And by Christ's redeeming gift, we are given this Holy Spirit, this Ruach of God, this wind that blows wherever it wills, and it then dwells within us to carry out the Spirit's work of transformation within us. The Spirit's work moves us away from all worldly ideals and worldly goals, things like worldly divisions and artificial hierarchies that we human beings are so good at doing to one another. And the Holy Spirit then moves us ever closer to the kingdom's goals and the kingdom's ideals where there is no division, there is no hierarchy among believers. And we who believe never need to worry about the possibility of losing our salvation. By the Spirit's power alone, we have been reborn, born anew into a kingdom of heaven, even as we live out our physical lives here in this world. And it has been accomplished for us by the breath, the ruach of God, breathing new life into our own spirit. You see, because of the spirit, we no longer belong to this world. We belong to the next. And you see, my friends, there in the next world, there is no fear. There is no worry. There is no need to judge the salvation of others. And scripture clearly tells us that all of this is but a free gift to us of God. God who alone reconciled us to God's own self through Jesus Christ and then gives to us this ministry of reconciliation to carry out in Christ's name. It is this ministry of God's reconciliation that we carry out in the world now that tears down walls and does away with artificial hierarchies between believers. It is this kingdom of God that teaches us how to love our neighbor. 1 John 4.18 tells us that there is no fear in love, 
Rather, perfect love drives out our fear. And in Christ, we have this perfection, this perfect love. We now no longer live as a fallen creation, but live as a redeemed creation, one that is made whole. And in speaking even about his own disciples on the night that Jesus himself was betrayed, he says this about us. They are not of this world any more than I am of this world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world even as I am not of it. Our rebirth is a spiritual rebirth, one that makes us into citizens of God's kingdom, even as we live here in this world of struggle. A reading from Ephesians teaches us that Christ's purpose was to create for himself one new humanity, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile us to God through the cross. And because of this, we are then fellow citizens of God's kingdom and a dwelling in which God lives by God's Holy Spirit. This is what it means to be born again. This is what God has done for each one of, each one of us. That we are now one as his church in the world. Not because of anything we have done or could ever do. Not because of how it is we believe, but because it is Christ himself who has saved us and drawn us into God's kingdom. And then we simply respond to this new life by serving him with grateful hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within each one of us. And all of this is made possible because Christ has chosen you. And Christ chose to die for our sins. This is life of freedom. This is what it means to be born again, released from all fear, to live for Christ and live out the new life that he has provided for us in his kingdom by carrying out his ministry of reconciliation with God and with one another. When we let go of ourselves, our old fears, our old ideas that no longer serve us as we live in the kingdom of God, as we learn to let go of our pride and our competition in the ways of this world, the Spirit's power is then unleashed within us, and we are truly transformed into a new creation. But my friends, that is not to say that there is nothing that we are called to do with this rebirth. And in fact, we are given spiritual disciplines and sacraments and the Word of God and the faith community in which to live, all designed to help us grow into this new life that we've already been given. This week, self-examination is the theme of this Lenten Sunday. To look at ourselves, to look within ourselves, the places within our own hearts, those hard places, those stony places that need to be softened, because otherwise we simply frustrate the Holy Spirit's work within us. We search for the old narratives and the old ideas that hold us back and keep us trapped and waste our time and effort and energy. We let go of our need to control and accept what Christ has done for us and become the new person that he is calling us to be. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the breath of 
of life in Jesus Christ. We are made whole and into a new creation, one that is truly born again. And it is by the Spirit's power as well that ordinary bread and juice become to us the very spiritual food provided for us by Jesus Christ. It is given to us to feed our souls and grow our faith for this journey of transformation that naturally occurs because we've been claimed by Christ and we are reborn. The Spirit's power then makes us into vessels of honor, serving in Christ's name in this world. So let us celebrate that sacrament together now. to receive communion where you're seated. Uh, we will watch for that. We will bring the elements to you. If you desire to come forward, you will be invited to do so. Um, and everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, this Holy Supper, which we are about to celebrate, is a feast of remembrance, of communion, and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent of the Father into the world to assume our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death on the cross. By Christ's death and resurrection and ascension, he has established for us a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we would be accepted of God just exactly as who we are right now in this moment and never be forsaken of him. We have come to have communion with this same Christ, who himself has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of bread, Christ makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us unto life eternal. And in the cup of blessing, Jesus comes to us in the vine in whom we too must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come in hope, believing that this bread and this cup are but a pledge, a promise, and foretaste of the feast of love of which we will partake when his kingdom has fully come when all things are made new and perfect and beautiful again, and when with an unveiled face we shall behold him, made like him in his glory. Since by Christ's death and resurrection and ascension, he obtained, he obtained for us the life-giving spirit who unites us all into one body, so are we to receive this supper in true brotherly and sisterly love, mindful of the communion of saints. Come, for all things are now ready. Please join with me in the prayer printed in your communion insert. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created the heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its majesty. You have given us life and being, and preserved us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love, 
in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the eternal Word made flesh for us and for our salvation, for the precious gift of this mighty Savior, who has reconciled us to you, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in the expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send thy Holy Spirit upon us, we pray that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up into all things unto Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that thy whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread from their meal, and when he had given thanks to God for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is to us spiritually as the communion with the body of Christ. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 
Timmy, blood of Christ shed for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. On the blood of Christ shed for you. As you continue to eat and to chew and to enjoy this nourishment of our bodies, would you join me in the communion prayer? Let's pray together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We praise and thank you, Lord God, that you have fed us at your table once again. We remember your mighty acts of power your deeds of love and compassion. Send us forth now from this place ever grateful for all your gifts and mindful of the communion of saints of whom we are each counted among, from the past into the present and even into the future. Abide in us, Lord, as your beloved disciples until we are joined together with you and the Father in the heavenly realms Go with us now, keeping us ever mindful of your grace and mercy and the table where you wait to feed us once again. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let's stand and sing our hymn of praise and grateful response number 250.
May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless through the renewing of your faith until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.